How's it going? Everyone got quite a lot to go over in this video. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero has a bit of a discount available if you are looking to buy a physical copy of the Standard Edition. We'll talk all about that and a couple of other deals to round out the video as well. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But right off the top, we've been covering Dragon Ball Sparking Zero a lot. Um, and if you are looking to buy a physical copy of the game and you are okay waiting a little bit, which I know is blasphemous in regards to Sparking Zero. Some of you guys just are excited to drop the hundred dollars for the deluxe edition and just jump into that however if you want a physical copy of the standard edition over at hsn reputable spot you can use the code hsn 2024 and you'll save ten dollars on sparking zero and you'll get it for sixty dollars instead of seventy dollars not a sizable discount but the game isn't even out yet and it's free shipping so it'll be shipped right to you and you'll get it you know, whenever it does deliver, but uh, you don't have to pay for shipping. You're getting $10 off. You're getting the game. If you're going to be busy with Metaphor anyway, and you're going to be checking out Sparking Zero down the line in like a week, you know, some of you guys, I know that I have been hyping up the Deluxe Edition and being like, oh, who can actually wait to play this game? There's a lot of people that are going to be able to wait to play this game. And if you are in that category, I mean, getting it for $60, the price point that games used to be at, that's not a bad shout. Um, this is a case where the Deluxe Edition is going to include north of 20 characters added to the game. That's the... That's the biggest element of me being like, all right, you kind of have to get the Deluxe Edition. It takes the roster to over 200 characters. And given what they've said about it, Dragon Ball Super Superhero content being in it, like Beast Gohan is going to be in the Season Pass. But you could buy the Season Pass down the line if you end up enjoying the game. But I just feel like most people that are super excited, and that might be my bias just reigning in and me being a little bit too excited as far as the game itself and not thinking objectively. And a lot of you guys might just have a casual interest in the game. You want to buy it, get it a little bit cheaper. You don't have any uh, need for the season pass right now. Like, I was talking to my buddy, and he was literally like, bro, I didn't even watch Super Super Hero. I don't give a damn about the DLC character. But I thought Beast Go On was awesome, but that might just be... My affinity towards Gohan also so shining through. Considering growing up, Gohan was my favorite character. I had the VHS tape of uh, when Gohan goes Super Saiyan 2 against Cell, and I swear to God, I must have played that VHS tape like a million times. It was crazy. So, you know, my bias is going to reign true a little bit as far as that's concerned, but I digress. If you do want it a little bit cheaper, leave a link in the description box below where you can get Sparky's Zero for $60. Marvel Spider-Man 2 is $47.49. This is another game that does not go on sale all too often, so I would say go check this out. I mean, if you have a PS5 and you haven't checked out Spider-Man 2, you are doing yourself a disservice. Now, the game is relatively, I don't want to say short, because I think saying it's short, I saw somebody on Twitter, and this is another instance of me installing Twitter being absolutely awful for me. Um, I saw somebody be like, oh, the game, you can beat it in six hours. Okay, it's not six hours long, but it's not a lengthy game. However, I feel like Spider-Man 2 does a really good job of being all killer and no filler. And with a lot of these games... It does feel like they're padded out content. Yeah, they're 50, 70 hours long or whatever, but it's a lot of padded out content. Spider-Man 2, the Platinum Trophy is actually worthwhile to get in Spider-Man 2, and I find it to be enjoyable to do the side content. I didn't think the side content was that monotonous. Is it amazing? I wouldn't say that, but I didn't think it was monotonous and a chore to do, which for a lot of other games, I would say cough, Assassin's Creed, cough, but... Nonetheless, I think it's very much worth a pickup. Uh, I don't know if this game's ever going to get DLC. It looks like it isn't. Remember, Spider-Man 2018 got DLC, but that DLC was noted, like, right when the game came out. Like, we knew it was going to be getting DLC, and I think all of the DLC was out by the end of the year. Um, we're a year removed from the release of Spider-Man 2, and there has been no inclination of it getting DLC, so I just don't think it's happening, or it might just get spun into, like, a bigger game. We know that the Venom game is rumored, and uh, we'll see how all that turns out. But forty-seven, forty-nine for Spider-Man 2, great deal there. That is a Prime exclusive deal if you don't have Prime. It's forty-nine ninety-nine, which I don't think I've seen all too often outside of like Prime Day, Prime exclusive deals, but don't quote me on that. Next up, we have Visions of Mana. It's 17% off for $49.99. I really enjoyed Visions of Mana. Unfortunately, the studio did shut down or it, had, it faced a lot of layoffs or whatever. The game's really good. You have to know what you're getting yourself into. This is very much a budget JRPG. It's not a grandiose adventure. 
It is a smaller scale game. The story, while predictable, it is enjoyable. You have a charming cast of characters and the gameplay and exploration and traversal. All of those elements I feel like are really, really well done. If you are a JRPG fan and you just like to play a lot of JRPGs, but Visions of Mana came out, $60, you know, a lot of other games coming out, you get the idea. Uh, you get the deal as far as what's going on. Um, you know, now at $50, I'm not saying it's a blow-away deal. Ideally, you would spend like $30 on it. But if you're a JRPG fan, I do think you're going to enjoy a great soundtrack here as well. Again, unfortunate as far as everything that transpired with the studio. And it looks like they are going to be uh, facing some layoffs. But this is a reality of the games industry. Speaking of Square Enix games... A big budget title, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the exclusive Amazon edition, is down to $49.99 if you do want to check that out. Again, much like Spider-Man 2, I imagine at this point the majority of you guys have played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. However, if you are picking up a PS5 Pro, I feel like you are doing yourself a disservice by not picking up Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, given that this is going to be one of those games that really showcases the power of the PS5 Pro. The performance mode in FF7 Rebirth, I thought, was looked like an Abomination. I thought it looked terrible. Um, and you guys know how I feel about playing games at 60 FPS. Like, I will take crappy visuals to play games at 60 FPS. This game, it was so bad that I just played the game at 30 FPS. That's how bad I thought FF7 Rebirth's performance mode was. The graphics mode looks great. If you're good with 30 FPS, you're going to enjoy it. But man, that performance mode left a lot to be desired. And for a lot of people, this is the game that's selling them on the PS5 Pro. Um, Nonetheless, even if you do buy it on the regular PS5, absolutely worth playing it. I would play it on the graphics mode, and if you can handle the performance mode, by all means, play it on the performance mode. Like, people are going to vary as far as their opinion on that. Uh, game is a significant improvement upon FF7 Remake. However, I do highly recommend you play FF7 Remake before playing this game. Um, you know, I feel like it's kind of essential. And also, I will say this. I think Queen's Blood is effing awesome. I love Queen's Blood. Um, I really hope they continue to evolve on that. I think they got something there with Queen's Blood. Um, I'm a fan of card games and things like that, but uh, I thought Queen's Blood is just really unique in how it's set up and I had a great time with that aspect of the game as well. Um, that is like a mini game that is baked into FF7 Rebirth. Well, not really supposed to be an integral part of the game, but when I tried it out, I was like, man, I really, really enjoyed it. I hope I heard there was some talk of creating a physical version of the game. I don't know if they need to do all that, and I don't know if it would be... You know, like a Hearthstone level game if they released it as a standalone digital title. I don't think they need to do that, but hopefully they do develop it in the third title as well. But that is going to do it for me. Again, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is available right now. Uh, $70, but over on HSN, if you create a new account, use the code HSN2024 and you'll get it for $60 instead of $70. And a couple of other good deals with Spider-Man 2, Visions of Mana, and FF7 Rebirth. $49.99 on Rebirth is quite good. That's going to do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Sound off there. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.